we've arrived at the case study at last. And again, uh, I would be doing the case study first, at least skimming it and looking at the data and maybe even giving it an outline. And the reason for that is uh, really shown right here. It's a longer essay. It has a greater point value. It is, I believe you get a separate set of scores or stars or whatever uh, for that one. And it's because it's covering all of the domains. Now, the uh, formula that I, I recommend that you use for that is something that looks like this, uh, where you have a five paragraph essay and then you identify like strength one and you identify strength two and then try to identify two needs like need A, for example, and uh, need B. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you write a lesson plan really for need A. If I ever redo this chart, I'll make that say a lesson A for that need and this would be lesson B for this need so sorry to be correcting stuff while I'm you know doing the video but you can't think of everything so that if you structure it this way uh, with two needs in the third paragraph then all you do is write a lesson plan for need A and state the benefit of that lesson plan right here like imagine imagine if you have a student who lacks literal comprehension and if that's the case, then you do a lesson for literal comprehension. What we saw last time was doing like a think aloud was what they pr uh, proposed here. So if you get like two of the same needs or something like that, I'd vary the lessons a little bit so you don't um, make it seem like you're just uh, rehashing uh, uh, things over and, uh, and over again. Um, so that you can show that you've got a little bit of uh, knowledge of, uh, of what to do. I'm sorry that window opened up. That's... I'm perplexed. I don't know what happened. But anyway, uh, benefit B, let's say that the child's got trouble with vocabulary uh, and needs to learn how to use structural analysis. Then you want to uh, describe a, a lesson plan. Like if, if the need was prefixes and suffixes, your lesson perhaps would be something like structural analysis. And then you'll just describe the benefits of structural analysis for uh, for that need. So you'll see how, um, how they constructed their uh, response, and it's much like what you see here. It's not exact, but I just try to keep things as simple as possible. That's Okay, so anyway, when we go to the actual uh, question then, here is what we see um, as far as what you need to do. So they give you some of the background information. It's an eight-year-old girl named Isabel whose primary language is English. It's focusing on her performance at the beginning of third grade. And remember, third grade is really a make or break time for the people who made this test. They want the children fluent by third grade. So watch the reading instruction videos that I put together if you need more information about that. You'll learn something, I'm sure. Uh, because after third grade, the students should be reading to learn. In other words, reading independently. Everything prior to that is the learning to read uh, stage. And after that is the reading to learn stage where the uh, child's supposed to be independent. So if you have a child who's struggling here, they're going to continue to struggle. Do more foundation stuff here. Do more advanced things here. And so here's what you need to do. You need to identify three of Isabel's important reading strengths and or needs at this point in the school year and cite evidence. So you're going to be providing uh, examples. Two lesson plans are what's required, and then two benefits. And that's why I recommend, if I can just flip to this uh, this other screen, that I'd be doing strengths, two separate strengths, two separate needs, and then two separate uh, lessons and two separate benefits that align with each of the lesson plans. That way you can uh, satisfy the, the terms of this question. So let's just kind of walk through some of the stimulus data that we're given and see what, uh, what we can learn from it. And you... I don't know if you can tag and put notes on the computerized version of the uh, the test. Hopefully you can. If not, hopefully at least you get some scratch paper to uh, to work with. Uh, if you get none of those things, wow, that's really, that's kind of rude, you know, really. Uh, but if you look at the first set of data that they have on the screen here, you will see, and you should see, that it's just asking the student about whether or not they enjoy reading. Sometimes, do you read for fun outside of school? That's this question here. Sometimes, but not much. Do you think you're a good reader? Of course I do. And write the title of a book you like, The Elmwood Kids and the Secret Club. Uh, I see if I can... Oh, pardon me. What do you do when you want to find a book, good book to read? I see if I can find a book about the Elmwood kids. Sometimes I ask my friends. So this child is stuck in a particular genre. It looks like uh, very predictable, easy narratives and with predictable characters who go on adventures and so forth. 
this piece of data here is a little um, important. I'm going to blow past some of the descriptive information. Don't you do it, but you know I'm trying to do videos here and not bore everybody to uh, to tears. Uh, but just look through this. You can read all this stuff yourself. Uh, I'm not reading it to you. You can see that this child's fluent. If you um, need a strength, and here's a strength for you. This child has the flu, and in this case, having the flu is good because this child is fluently decoding all of these uh, sentences and the words within them. You could even talk about um, some of the diff some of the things that she's able to decode. Like right here, here's a polysyllabic word down here. Here's some complicated punctuation in here. So there's all kinds of things you could talk about in, in with regard to to, to fluency. Don't skip the, the data. Do read through it. And when you do, what you should be able to see is that this is a literal question. Where is Sarah's family from and where are they going? That is literal. And how about this one? It says, um, what can you tell me about Sarah? That is also a literal comprehension question right here. And here's your inferential question. Why do Sarah's eyes fill with tears? And Isabel says, because she's tired. My mom says she can tell when my brother's really tired because he starts to cry at the littlest thing. So what you see uh, with this question, that one is the inferential question, that second to the last one right there. Let me see if I can mark it easily. And you're going to find that she has literal comprehension question based on the first question and the second. Where does she lack uh, comprehension? It's with inferential comprehension. So if you were to just think about the uh, the outline for a second, and I'll go ahead and, and uh, try to draw that in here. Um, when you have uh, paragraph one, and you have paragraph number two, and you have paragraph number three, we've got quite a bit of things done. Like paragraph one for a strength, remember that's your strength paragraph. Fluency is one of her strengths. So is literal comprehension. The only thing that you've got to remember to do is just to put in examples in there for each of them. And I would take them right out of the, the text. First was the informal reading inventory that she uh, read aloud. And when she read that one aloud, um, she had very few, uh, uh, she had no comprehension errors on literal comprehension. And you can just state out the questions that the teacher asked, for example. Uh, with regard to the needs, there's really two needs to deal with. Uh, one is going to be inferential comprehension. And the second we haven't identified yet. But look, for our fourth paragraph, I'm going to deal with inferential comprehension directly and a lesson that you could do, certainly you could do a think aloud. Uh, I would recommend doing something like a story map, you know, just for a little variety. Because if you remember, we already did a uh, think aloud once and we don't want to seem to one note when we write it up. And then we'll have to put in a benefit of a story map. And what's the benefit of a story map? It's really you know, pretty simple. It's visual. It's going to help with independence. It's something that the child can do on other passages. But what we need to do now is we need to identify the second need and the second lesson plan. And if we look, for example, through some of the other data that we are given, and again, I'm not going to read all of this um, stuff to you uh, because you can do that on your own. Uh, but there are things that you can uh, include in here that this child is not engaged in her own reading. Maybe that would support um, the fact uh, the the need with inferential comprehension. As the text is getting harder, she's just getting kind of further behind. Um, this is additional evidence of her strengths with uh, word decoding and accuracy, for example. She has some trouble, it looks like, with high-frequency irregular words. So maybe vocabulary is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, there are some clues in here about uh, the parents and the uh, maybe they're supporting one type of uh, reading versus another. They're not doing at-home reading. I guess you could make a big deal out of this if you can't find any other needs, but I would be going after really big needs. You know, in lacking inferential comprehension is uh, certainly one thing that needs to be addressed. And another major thing might be the vocabulary. You can see in here that she's kind of falling behind, it looks like, on uh, informational text. And um, you could address that, but again, I'd stay with really obvious things. Here's a really big uh, data set in here that you can uh, read on your own. And all it does is reinforce 
and when I read it, what I get out of it is that she's got really good inferential, pardon me, literal comprehension, but she really likes predictable narratives. And you can kind of see that in, in, uh, in here that she does have some ability with narrative text when she's um, familiar with it. But again, that's not the data set I would pay attention to. Go after the easy, big ones like this. Look, these are multiple meaning words in here. And clearly if a child is lacking uh, multiple meaning words or the ability to, to work with them, they're going to interpret texts uh, in theory in only one way. Like she knows rose in terms of a, a flower, a rose is a flower. She might not know what I rose early this morning means. Um, if they don't produce it, you assume that they don't know it. Rock, I found a big rock. Uh, I rocked back and forth. So the verb form, not uh, there. I like to play with Kara. Missing are things like I like to play music. I went to a play last night. Uh, left she got, that's good. But it's really um, a problem here with uh, multiple meaning words. It looks like beat. My team beat the other team. I need to, uh, the, the cook beat eggs for breakfast or something like that is, is out. I'm scrolling past the stuff to get back to the little outline. And so you see, this is pretty easy. Um, go after the big data sets. Uh, you'll certainly want to uh, read everything. Uh, there's no question about it, but if you learn that reading instruction model that I talk about in a separate set of videos, it'll help. And so this would be like multiple meaning words. This is my own abbreviation. So multiple meaning words and maybe a uh, word map or a semantic map or something like that would be good. And again, it's multi-sensory, it's visual, it's all of uh, those things here. So let's take a look at how they wrote the essay and just try to keep this this little outline in mind right here as we as we read it. Again, this doesn't line up perfectly, but I try to do things as uh, as easily and obviously as I uh, as I can. Um, let's see what they say. However, Isabel's most important reading strength is that she appears to be a good decoder, as indicated by her performance on the IRA, the informal reading assessment, and the oral reading fluency assessment, which was mentioned in the teacher notes. So look how they use a lot of the real estate, you know, from the uh, from the data sets to write this uh, this essay. Look at the examples in here. She accurately decoded all of the words on the IRA, making only one minor deletion, and her accuracy rate, or her accuracy in the ORF was 97%. She made short pauses on both asset assessments before high-frequency irregular words, <clears throat> thought in low-frequency words quit and climbed Prairie in Oregon, or Oregon if you're from Minnesota. However, her oral reading rate of 70 word, uh, words uh, per minute suggests that her fluency, at least in terms of accuracy and rate, is not an issue at this time. Word count per minute? I don't know what that is. I'm sure they explain it somewhere else, but it's a word count of some kind. And let's look at the second uh, strength right here. Isabel's uh, understanding of Sarah's sadness may reflect a weakness in inferential comprehension. I think I would have spent more time on her literal comprehension as a second strength. That's what I would have done, but they spend more most of their time on two needs, it looks like. So uh, while she demonstrates good literal comprehension, so here's where they get into the strengths of literal, Sarah's family came from New York and was going to Oregon and Sarah had a little sister. Sarah was tired. Uh, remember, they got that from the discussion that occurred after the uh, informal uh, reading assessment that she was given. And so she got the literal questions right, but she bombed the inferential. Isabel needs to consider details more carefully so that she can better understand why characters and stories behave and think as they do. On a reading survey, she indicated that she sometimes enjoys reading and that she doesn't often read for fun. This may be because she is not inferring much meaning. In here, I, that's why I, I would recommend you just stick to two strengths in the opening if you can find them. It's not always possible because that if you do that, then what you can do is just take some of the statements that were uh, that she made as support for what she can do. Uh, and then this paragraph I would have uh, fashioned around the two needs, one being inferential comprehension and the other being vocabulary. Uh, but this worked, apparently. It's probably what they're using to train their, their people on when they score them, so whatever. Isabel also needs to increase her vocabulary and understanding of multiple meaning words. She was able to think of an additional meaning for only two of the six words on the informal reading assessment. 
A general weakness in vocabulary knowledge could be uh, another factor contributing to her minimal enjoyment in reading, which has led to the limited amount of breadth of her independent reading. Unfortunately, if her independent reading continues to be so limited, this will only continue, continue to inhibit her vocabulary growth. So if we can just sort of back up uh, a little bit here. In these two paragraphs, uh, really these are two need paragraphs. So they are essentially giving one strength and two major needs, and you can do that. Um, just be careful with what you're doing and that you understand what you're doing. You're identifying two needs because you need to write two lesson plans and two benefits, so watch. Since they open with uh, inferential comprehension as a need, that's what they're going to address first. One instructional strategy to improve Isabel's comprehension would be to teach her to use information from the text to better, better understand character motives. I would teach her to refer to the text for details, to analyze a character's actions, and to better understand their motives and feelings. For example, when Isabel bases her inferences about Sarah, why Sarah was crying on personal experience, Isabel's brother cries when he's tired. Rather than on something she read in the story, I would urge her to go back to the text to look for evidence. And if necessary, I direct her to the lines in which Sarah talks about picnics under the maple tree with her grandmother. Uh, if she'll ever see, the, and wonders if she'll ever see that tree again. So that's all the lesson plan. Here's the benefit. I'll, let me I highlight it in green for you. By teaching Isabel to refer to the text to find support for her answers, I would be developing her inferential comprehension skills. She would learn to base inferences on evidence from the text. The only thing I would say and recommend uh, that you do in here is just to provide more detail uh, or more. Uh, multi-sensory, uh, more independence, more using a variety of skills and so forth. That benefit is a little too short, I think. I don't think it goes far enough. So I would uh, definitely try to inflate it uh, if, you, if you can. Uh, a second strategy would be to help Isabel increase her understanding of vocabulary, first on the words with multiple meanings. So it's exactly what I told you. Um, you have to have two needs. One was inferential. This is, liter this is uh, vocabulary. So they write a separate lesson for it. So look, beginning with the words that Isabel had difficulty with on the informal skills assessment, rose, rock, play, and beat, I would show her sentences that illustrate other meanings of each word. The man beat the rug with a stick, beat it, I beat two eggs uh, into the cake batter. So look, it, it, this isn't like that hard when you kind of get the hang of what to do. They take all their examples right from the data and as long as you know your way around that reading instruction model you'll be able to find where the needs are and then just let the text do the writing. I'd have her read sentences and determine the words meaning in each sentence. After analyzing a given sentence I'd ask her to think of her own sentences that use the word in the same way. So it's a five, this is a five-step lesson plan not just in general but on, well it's got Teacher modeling, guided practice, and independent practice. Okay, so those three major sections are here. And it addresses one of the areas of uh, weakness, in this case, multiple meanings. This benefit is way too short. Um, I would not expect to get a high rating using a benefit like this. Look, like, these activities would expand uh, Isabel's uh, vocabulary knowledge, which would increase her comprehension of text. What you really need to be putting in here is why. That's really what you want to be putting in, why and how. That says how, in case you were wondering. I'll try to make that look like an H. It doesn't look like anything, but uh, this benefit, as I said, is not substantial enough. You need to, uh, to beef that one up for, uh, for sure. Um, this is what they say about the response and why they say that it's a, it's a good one. It says, this assignment <clears throat> assesses content related to the five domains of the RECA content specifications. The response fulfills the purpose of the assessment by identifying one of Isabel's reading strings to coding uh, a accuracy and two reading needs, inferential comprehension and vocabulary. Discusses two strategy that should enhance Isabel's literacy development in light of her current performance, instruction and inferential comprehension and understanding multiple meaning words, and explaining how these strategies can be expected to benefit Isabel. The writer accurately interprets Isabel's performance as indicated in various case study documents and then demonstrates a solid grasp of current reading pedagogy by describing instructional strategies that are likely to improve Isabel's reading skills. Strong supporting evidence is found in the response's inclusion of accurate and appropriate details and expl explanations in the inclusion of an accurate rationale explaining the probable benefits of each of the two strategies described. Okay, so 
that's the case study. You would have to spend much more time reading that stuff than I did. I'm just scrolling back to the uh, to the outline. Uh, again, this is an outline that uh, I've uh, recommended people use, and it seems to be beneficial. But just remember what they did. Maybe you want to do that. It might actually be a little bit a uh, little bit easier. Where in the first paragraph, for example, that's just all strength information. The second paragraph is all about need one. The third paragraph is all about need uh, two. And paragraph four is a lesson. You just simply restate need one and you do a lesson plan and you provide a benefit. And five was need uh, two and a lesson plan. That's a lesson plan LP and its benefit. Maybe that's easier than, than this is, but you never know what you're going to get. You may be able to find all these strengths and no needs. Then what do you do? Well, write three strengths and then write lesson plans that build on the strengths. That's the best that I can, uh, can recommend. So let me uh, wrap this one up just by throwing this screen in front of you uh, one more time. And again, I would start by outlining the case study, working backwards, doing the multiple choice, and then coming back and filling all these uh, things in and nailing the case study, nailing these two uh, lesson plans on word analysis and comprehension, and then doing the best you can on these. Um, I think a lot of people do this uh, by doing the multiple choice first and burning out on them, and then they do these in order. And by the time they come to the case study, which counts the most, you know, the person's just burned out and exhausted. So that's why I'd start with the case study if I were you. But again, these are only suggestions. You do you, uh, what's going to work for you, not what I tell you. It's not my money or my, ex my, my experience. Okay, well, I hope you found all this stuff uh, helpful. Um, I'll try to get to another practice test uh, in the near future.